All right, so last time we made this profile in this sketch, and we want to take this and we want to bring it into the third dimension to make it into a body. So I'm going to click on this area right here just so it turns blue. That way I know what I'm working with. And then I'm going to come up here to the tool menu and click on the extrude button right there. Or you can press E on the keyboard. That's a shortcut for it. Now we have this little arrow. We can actually drag this up here and start to turn this into a cube. So I'm going to make this at 25 millimeters. There we go. Plus that. Hit enter, double click on the middle mouse wheel to kind of zoom all. And now we've created this cool little cube, which is a good start. It's getting us much closer to this view right here. Now, before we go and actually work on anything else here, there's something that we've done here that's actually pretty cool. We've created many more faces that we can then create more sketches on top of. So to get the round bit right here, let's go ahead and click on the top area. So I'm selecting this face. You can actually see it. It's a face right down here in the bottom right. And then if we go back into the sketch command here, that's going to make us normal to that top face right there. So what I want to do here is create a circle. I'm going to go ahead and use the circle tool right there. And we're going to click right here in the middle and drag it out. As you would imagine, there's many, many different ways to make a circle as well. I'm not going to go over all of them, but you can see them right here. Two points, three points, tangents and whatnot. But um, I'm essentially working off the origin right there because that's the way we've designed a part. I, that's a really good method, especially if you have something that is symmetrical. Anyhow, uh, clicked on the center point here and we can drag this out. As you can see, it has not been defined yet. We're still light blue. So what I want to do here is I'm going to use the tangent constraint. I'm going to click on the circle and actually click over here on this line on the right. So. What we're able to do is actually create constraints to existing geometry, not just to sketch lines. That's a, an important bit right there. So we know that this circle here is now tangent to the line, which is actually right over here along this side of the cube. Pretty cool. Matter of fact, if we were to go back into that circle thing right here, click on the center and drag it out. Another point that we have here is actually this vertex which is where all of these different lines connect. We can actually click there and specify it to that point as well. So a lot of the geometry that you create can actually be used to then constrain another sketch too. Really cool. I don't want you to actually go ahead and make this. We can go ahead and delete that. Um, so there we have it. We've now created uh, a, a circle here. So as you can imagine, we've already got this area right here. Now I could finish the sketch and then we can go ahead and extrude that up. But we can also skip a step here and just hit the E key, which will exit us out of that sketch and then throw us back into the extrude tool all in one click right there. Just saving us a little bit of effort. At this point, we can take this and bring it up. Oh, how about 25 millimeters again? Now, let me go ahead and click on the little house here, and that's going to bring us back to our normal view. As you can imagine, it looks kind of tall and looks kind of weird. Maybe we want to go back and change something here. So if you look down here in the bottom, this is actually our timeline. So this is everything that's happened to us historically. And what I want to do is actually want to make this a little bit shorter. So I'm going to double click on this extrude feature right here. And I'm going to say instead of 25, what if this was just 10 millimeters? So we type in 10, hit enter, and as you can see, that brings everything back down. And because this sketch was on top of that face right there, it stays connected to it. So we've learned a couple of things thus far. We've learned that uh, as we create geometry, we create more faces, and then therefore we can create sketches on those faces. And based on the history right here, everything is defined off of everything that came before it. So knowing that, let's go ahead and go back into this second sketch that we made right here. Right click on that and go into edit sketch. And what I want you to do is add a second circle inside of here. So let's go back into the circle command. In this case, we're just gonna click the C key. So we don't have to go up here to the whole menu. Um, and we're gonna click in the middle and we're actually going to make this 15 millimeters. So now I've got one circle that is tangent to however big this cube is. And then we have a dimension here in the middle um, that is 15 millimeters so that we can measure the inside of this printed part to kind of give us an idea of, of what offset we might need to work to actually get to the real dimension that we want sort of thing. Anyhow, there you have it. Let's go ahead and hit finish sketch right there. But you notice that, ooh, 
this extrude is still, um, it doesn't have that hole in the middle. So let's right click on that and actually go into that extrude feature and edit that. And you'll notice that we have a couple of different areas that are available now when we mouse over that. And what I want to do here is unselect the one in the middle. Matter of fact, if you look at the dialog box on the right here, you can see that the profiles um, tells you how many are selected. And when you're clicking on this, you notice that it's blue. This allows you to add to that selection or remove it. So even though we didn't create a sketch over here, we can actually use some of that ex existing geometry if we wanted to add that to our extrude feature. So that is really handy, especially if you don't want to create a bunch of new sketches all the time. At any rate, that's exactly what we want right there, except for we want it to be 10 millimeters tall. So there we have it. We have kind of this O on top of our, our cube down here. However, one last thing that we want to do here is actually drill a hole from here all the way down to the bottom and make sure that it always clears the bottom. Um, now we could go in here and create a sketch and make sure that the circle is the exact same size of this, but we don't need to do that because we just learned that we can use existing uh, face like this as a profile. So I'm going to click on the center of this and we're going to go back to the extrude tool, which is just going to be E. And as you can see, we can start to kind of move that face up, or if we drag it below the surface right there, we can cut away from it. Notice the different operations over here in the right dialog. Uh, we, last time we used the join command, and now we're using the cut. You can use the intersect as well if you want to kind of use only the space that's um, in between the two bodies that you're actually creating right there. There's also a new body if you wanted to create something completely new that is separate. Uh, we're not going to worry about that right now. Um, however, there's also a new component, which again, we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to go for the cut. Now we could drag this down here into a very large dimension so that it always cuts through everything. But I would like this to be a little bit more flexible in case we change a bunch of dimensions in the future. But I don't want to have to redefine how far this feature goes down here into, uh, it cuts into our, our square bit. So what I want to say is I'm going to go to from distance and go to to object. And then at this point it's asking me, well, where's this object that you want to go to? And I want that to be this face right down here. So we're going to go all the way down here to that face. And we're always going to cut down to that point, no matter how far um, this distance is. This actually allows us to create some pretty cool things. So if we were to go to offset, you can actually say negative one millimeter. So we go down to this and then we back off always one millimeter. Very useful. We're going to use this a lot in the future. However, in this example, we don't want to do that. Uh, so we're going to make that zero. We're always going to go up to that face and cut that away. So boom, just like that. So now we've drilled all the way down there through the bottom and we've created our part. And as you can imagine, we can go back here and we can change this if we really wanted to make it something like 100. And then when you go all the way back out here, you can see that we still cut down there to the bottom no matter what. So go ahead and hit save on this because that completes the part. For some extra credit, maybe you want to play around with this a little bit. Try some different things. Maybe click on this profile, hit extrude, just to kind of see what goes on here. There's also a lot of little icons and whatnot. You can kind of go ahead and play around with this, see what they do. And then when you're ready, let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson where we're going to make our very first part that's going to end up on our 3D printer.